Now speaking, Jonah Teeter Ballin, Senior Director, Corporate Development and Investor Relations. Welcome listener to AeroVironment's fiscal year 2023 fourth quarter and full year earnings call. Certain information provided during the call involves forward-looking statements with risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from expectations. The company has filed a slide presentation with its earnings release and posted it to the investor section of their website. Today's content is time-sensitive and accurate only as of June 27, 2023. Now speaking, Wahid Nawabi, President, Chairman, and Chief Executive Officer. Aerovironment reported record-breaking financial results for their fourth quarter and full year. Revenue increased 40% compared to the prior year period, with product revenue nearly doubling year-over-year to just under $142 million. The funded backlog also doubled year-over-year to $424 million, driven by more than $750 million in bookings throughout fiscal year 2023. Guidance was provided for fiscal year 2024, which reflects nearly 20% growth in revenue, higher margins, and improved bottom-line results. The improvement in fourth-quarter revenue was due to higher SUIS and TMS sales, up 60% and more than 100%, respectively, compared to the prior year period. This was driven by demand for Switchblade and Puma products. Gross margin as a percentage of sales was 37%. Pro forma bottom line profitability metrics were stronger this quarter due to higher revenues offsetting increased operating expenses. In terms of recent news, Aerovironment was not selected by the U.S. Army to proceed with increment two of the future tactical unmanned aircraft systems. While disappointed, they remain confident that Jump 20 UAS is the most versatile and cost effective solution in the Group Two Thirds UAS market today. They also remain focused on winning other key programs and leveraging the strength of their portfolio of innovative unmanned solutions. Moving forward, Aerovironment will focus on three segments, unmanned systems, combining SUAS, MUAS, and UGV product lines, loitering munitions, formerly known as tactical missile systems, and McCready Works advanced solutions, including HAPS and other customer-funded R&D programs. They expect strong demand for SUAS and TMS solutions, the launch of several new products, significant growth potential in the medium UAS market, and record levels of performance from UGV and HAPS product lines. Now speaking, Kevin McDonnell, Senior Vice President, Chief Financial Officer. The fourth quarter and full year fiscal 2023 performance was strong with record revenue of $186 million, an increase of 40% from the fourth quarter of fiscal 2022. The largest segment during the quarter was small UAS with a record $94.6 million of revenue, up from last year's $59.2 million. Tactical Missile Systems, or TMS, recorded revenue of $42.5 million, compared to $20.2 million last year during Q4. Revenue for the other segment, which includes UGV, HAPS, the McCready Works businesses, increased year-over-year to $40.6 million, versus $30.1 million in the fourth quarter of fiscal 2022. Full-year revenues hit a record $540.5 million, which is 21% higher than fiscal 2022. Product revenues accounted for 76% of total revenues, an increase from 56% in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. Gap gross margins remain steady at 37%, identical to the fourth quarter of the previous year. On the other hand, the non-gap adjusted gross margin slightly decreased to 39% from 40% in the prior year. Adjusted product gross margins for the quarter were 47%, versus 49% in the fourth quarter of last fiscal year. Adjusted service gross margins, the fourth quarter was at 13%, versus 28% during the same quarter last year. For the full year, gap gross margins ended at 32% in fiscal 2023, the same level as last fiscal year, and adjusted gross margins decreased from to 35% from 36%. In terms of adjusted EBITDA, slide 13 of our earnings presentation shows the reconciliation of the gap net loss to adjusted EBITDA. In the fourth quarter of fiscal 2023, adjusted EBITDA was $46 million, representing an increase of over 60%. For the full fiscal year 2023, adjusted EBITDA was $90 million, representing an increase of 43% from last year. SG&A expense, excluding intangible amortization and acquisition-related expenses, for the fourth quarter was 13% of revenue and 15% of revenue for the fiscal year 2023. R&D expense for the fourth quarter was 9% of revenue and 12% for full fiscal year 2023. During the fourth quarter, the company encountered a net loss of $160.5 million, of which $190.1 million was a result of non-cash charges related to the medium UAS business. Of the total non-cash charge, $34.1 million was the acceleration of intangible asset amortization related to a particular customer. The remaining $156 million of the total non-cash charge was a goodwill adjustment from the revaluation of the medium UAS goodwill from the Arcturus acquisition. 
Gap EPS loss was $6.31 per share in the quarter and a loss of $7.04 per share in for the year, both reflecting the non-cash charges discussed previously. In terms of non-GAAP EPS, the company posted adjusted earnings per diluted share of $0.99 cents for the fourth quarter of fiscal 2023, versus $0.12 per diluted share for the fourth quarter of fiscal 2022. Full-year adjusted EPS was $1.26 per share, versus $1.06 per share in fiscal 2022. Total cash, restricted cash, and investments at the end of the quarter was $156.5 million, which is an increase of $51.9 million from the third quarter of fiscal 2023. We expect adjusted gross margins to improve to the high 30s in FI24, with a shift to more product revenues and transition of service margins to a more normal level. In summary, the fourth quarter and full-year fiscal 2023 performance saw record revenue, bookings, backlog, adjusted gross margins and adjusted EBITDA. Small UAS accounted for the majority of revenue with strong demand beyond Ukraine. Tactical missile systems also recorded strong revenue with $125 million of orders during Q4 and $230 million for the year. Other segments' revenue increased year over year. GAAP gross margins remained steady at 37% while the non-GAAP adjusted gross margin slightly decreased to 39%. Adjusted EBITDA increased by 60% and 43% for the fourth quarter and full year respectively. Non-GAAP EPS for the fourth quarter and full year were $0.99 cents and $1.26 respectively. Total cash, restricted cash, and investments increased by $51.9 million. Now speaking, Wahid Nawabi, President, Chairman, and Chief Executive Officer. This company is expecting a record-setting year in fiscal 2024, citing strong global demand for their solutions and the funded backlog at record levels. The company has provided guidance of between $630 million and $660 million in revenue, net income between $50 million to $58 million or $1.91 to $2.21 per diluted share, non-GAAP adjusted EBITDA of between $110 million and $120 million, a non-GAAP earnings per diluted share, excluding acquisition-related costs, amortization of intangible assets, and other one-time expenses, of between $2.30 and $2.60. The visibility to the midpoint of their fiscal year 24 revenue guidance range is at 78%, with first half revenue expected to represent almost 50% of the full fiscal year and Q1 revenue to account for nearly 40% of first half revenues. Additionally, Admiral Phil Davidson recently joined the board of directors, bringing his extensive and relevant military expertise to further enable the company to better support customers and capitalize on opportunities. RBC Capital Markets Analyst Ken Herbert, inquired, Wahid, can you provide more detail on the revenue guidance for fiscal 24 and explain the assumptions for growth in the TMS and SUA segments? Wahid Nawabi replied, thanks, Ken. We are proud of the great job our team did in the last quarter. This resulted in a record year for backlog revenue. Generally, our results were very strong. Looking forward to fiscal year 24, we anticipate significant growth in both TMS and unmanned systems product lines. There is broad demand for our systems and products worldwide. We anticipate close to $100 million in additional revenue next year. Additionally, our strong backlog and visibility allow us to balance our quarters evenly with first half being close to 50% and first quarter being 40%. This is due to the increased demand for our products and the changing paradigm of small unmanned systems and loitering munitions. RBC Capital Markets Analyst Ken Herbert inquired, What is the current reach of the switchblade system sales and what is your timeline for achieving complete penetration into the 50 approved countries? Wahid Nawabi replied, sure. We have orders booked from four allied countries so far, but the list of countries we're able to market and sell to has more than doubled to 50. Our track record and performance with U.S. military has shown the capability and value of our system, and U.S. DOD has been supportive in increasing that list. Over the last decade, small UAS has grown to over 50 countries, so there's potential for TMS business to follow a similar trend. We're actively engaged with several countries in Europe and Asia, and many show interest in acquiring this capability. We expect to see healthy growth in the years to come. William Blair and company analyst Louis De Palma inquired, can you provide an update on the development of your new products, including the Puma, Vapor Helicopter and Jackal Turbojet? Wahid Nawabi replied, Louis, our investments in new products and AI autonomy and software analytics have been paying off. We've shipped products to customers and received orders for them. Our Vapor MX-55 helicopter is the best in its category, with the capability to launch switchblades. As part of a program called Long Range Precision Munitions, we're partnering with Northrop Grumman for the Jackal product. The Puma VTOL allows us to launch Pumas without a runway or hand launching. 
Additionally, our systems are capable of working in GPS-denied operations, without communications, and finding targets autonomously. This integrated family of system solutions gives us a competitive edge. We look forward to continued progress in these areas in the quarters ahead. William Blair and company analyst Louis De Palma inquired, could you provide an estimate of how much of the $230 million TMS orders were related to the Switchblade 600? Kevin McDonald replied, thanks for the question, Louis. We don't break out the orders or backlog by product. Both products have distinct markets and we're hopeful for strong sales of both. Wahid Nawabi replied, all Switchblade vans have been a great success. But Switchblade 600 we feel very good about it. We've seen tremendous demand from the US submarine community and our customers are thrilled with the product. We continue to invest in expanding production capacity to meet the growing need for this model. Jeffrey's analyst Greg Conrad inquired, given your commentary around TMS revenue doubling in the quarter, how are you managing supply chain to meet demand and ensure profitability in fiscal year 24? Wahid Nawabi replied, we're pleased with the progress we've made on TMS, a battle-tested loitering munitions product. Our backlog is strong and customer engagement indicates the demand for this multi-billion dollar market could be very large. Lead times remain a challenge, but we anticipate healthy growth in fiscal year 24 and beyond. We are confident that we are at an inflection point and excited to capitalize on the opportunities ahead. Kevin McDonald replied, we are confident that the supply chain needed to reach our guidance is in place. Jeffrey's analyst Greg Conrad inquired, how can you monetize AI progress and what impact could that have on the portfolio? Wahid Nawabi replied, Greg, our Puma visual navigation system is a modular kit that allows a Puma system to autonomously find its location and chart a course without relying on GPS. This capability sets us apart from our competitors and is just the beginning of what we can do in this space. We plan to continue to grow this capability with additional hardware and software enhancements over the next few years. In addition, our business will eventually include software as a selling item, potentially through a subscription or license model depending on customer needs. Robert W. Baird and company analyst Jan Franz Engelbrecht inquired, can you provide an update on the replenishment of the Switchblade 300, specifically in regards to the 700 drones sent initially in the recent $65 million order? Wahid Nawabi replied, Jan Franz, thank you for your question. We have delivered a number of our Switchblade systems to the U.S. Department of Defense, DOD, who have in turn supplied them to Ukraine forces and they have been satisfied with the product. The process to replenish the U.S. DOD inventory is likely to take more than one year. We are working on multiple fronts to fulfill the need, which is larger than before. We are also seeing increased demand from other countries. This will be beneficial for our Switchblade family products over the next couple of years. Lead times, primarily for the warhead, will limit the number of units we can deliver this year, though we have secured our requirements. We anticipate that the Switchblade 300 and 600 will benefit from replenishment of the US DoD, delivery to Ukraine, an increase in variance with higher average selling prices, and international demand as well as other platforms such as LRPM or OMFV with GDLS programs. Robert W. Baird and company analyst Jan Franz Engelbrecht inquired, what strategies are you considering to plug the MUIS segment shortfall in orders beyond 2024? Wahid Nawabi replied, Jan France, we remain bullish on the medium UAS category, particularly group two-thirds UAS. We are disappointed with the customer's decision but have asked for clarification. Meanwhile, we are pursuing multiple other potential opportunities internationally, including a program of record providing jump 20 UAVs to Ukraine for their conflict. Our investment in this market is still strong given the large TAM and the ability to conduct missions of group four-fifths UAS at a fraction of the cost. We have various upgrades and enhancements planned, and customers have evaluated our offering and determined it to be best in class. Jonah Teeter Ballin replied, Thank you for your interest in AeroVironment. We appreciate you joining us on today's conference call and encourage you to visit our website at avink.com for an archived version of this call and our SEC filings. We hope the information we provided was helpful and look forward to speaking with you again following next quarter's results.